LPV stands for Localizer Performance with Vertical Guidance. LPV is a category of approach minimums for RNAV approaches that are typically lower than LNAV or LNAV-VNAV minimums. RNAV approaches with LPV minimums are built on the Satellite-Based Augmentation System, or SBAS. In the United States and Canada, this system is known as the Wide Area Augmentation System, or WAS. Other SBAS systems currently operating or in development at this time are the European Geostationary Navigation Overlay Service, or EGNOS, GPS-Aided Geostationary Augmented Navigation, or GAGON, and the Multifunctional Satellite Augmentation System, or MSAS. An SBAS system is typically made up of a network of ground-based sensors along with space-based communication satellites and SBAS-capable GPS receivers. The ground-based sensors gather GPS signals and apply a correction to them. The correction data is then sent to a communication satellite, which in turn broadcasts the information to an SBAS-equipped GPS receiver on board an aircraft. The GPS receiver combines the SBAS correction signals with data from GPS satellites and produces highly accurate position data that is then used to fly RNAV approaches to LPV minimums. Prior to the development of SBAS, GPS was not able to provide the accuracy or integrity to achieve CAT-1 minimums during approaches. The FAA and Department of Transportation began development of WAS in 1994 to allow precision approaches, and in 2003, WAS was activated for public use. An RNAV approach with LPV minimums combines the FMS navigation database with SBAS signals from GPS satellites to produce an approach that closely mimics an ILS. FMS navigation databases in SBAS-capable aircraft contain an additional piece of information for each LPV approach called a Final Approach Segment, or FAS, data block. The FAS data block contains the lateral and vertical parameters that define the approach to be flown. An RNAV approach with LPV minimums combines information from the FAS data block with highly accurate SBAS correction signals to produce an approach that closely mimics an ILS. This increased accuracy allows LPV approach minimums to be as low as 200 feet and one half mile visibility. Similar to an ILS, when LPV is active on an approach, course deviations are angular instead of linear, meaning the sensitivity of the deviations are increased as the aircraft approaches the runway. To explain further, on an approach using linear deviation, a one-dot deviation can equal 75 feet at the final approach fix and 75 feet at the runway, whereas on an approach using angular deviation, a one-dot deviation can be equal to approximately 180 feet at the final approach fix, but only 18 feet at minimums. Approaches with LPV minimums are conducted using the Approach button on the Guidance Panel, which activates the LNAV and VGP submodes. However, when the aircraft begins the final approach segment and LPV is active, the lateral and vertical deviations are no longer provided by the FMS, but are sent directly from the GPS sensor. Let's walk through an operational example of an approach to LPV minimums. First, select the appropriate runway. Then, select the desired RNAV approach and approach transition. When selecting an RNAV approach with LPV minimums, LPV is the default minimum selection. Select Activate to load the approach into the flight plan. Each RNAV approach with LPV minimums is identified by a unique approach identifier or approach ID. The pilot must verify the approach ID on the approach chart, the arrival page on the MCDU, and the PFD. The approach ID is displayed on the PFD when LPV is active. After an RNAV LPV approach is loaded into the FMS, the LPV armed annunciator is displayed in white on the PFD when the following criteria are met. The aircraft is within 30 nautical miles of the destination airport. The nav source is FMS. The fast data block is loaded into the FMS. An approach ID is displayed on the PFD. 
and the GPS is receiving an SBAS signal. Once an approach clearance is received and the final approach fix is the active waypoint, the approach mode can be armed by pushing the Approach button on the guidance panel. When the approach mode is armed, LNAV and VGP are displayed as the armed submodes. The LNAV course and VGP glide path are captured similar to an ILS localizer and glide slope. When VGP is captured, the altitude pre-selector can be set to the missed approach altitude. Approximately two nautical miles from the final approach fix, the approach annunciator on the PFD is displayed. The LPV captured annunciator is displayed in green on the PFD, approximately two nautical miles from the final approach fix. A green active LPV annunciator displayed on the PFD indicates that the aircraft is now using high integrity angular deviations directly from the GPS to guide the lateral and vertical path of the aircraft to make an approach to LPV minimums. The VGP mode and glide path during an RNAV LPV approach is similar to the ILS glide slope mode in the following ways. They both ignore the altitude preselector. They will not level off at the decision altitude. Both provide a stabilized approach path and allow for standardized approach procedures. And they have published decision altitudes that allow for a momentary dip below minimums during a missed approach. As the aircraft reaches the LPV decision altitude, the pilot must either continue to land or initiate a missed approach. When a missed approach is initiated and the TOGA button is pushed, navigation guidance automatically transitions from GPS back to FMS. For aircraft equipped with FMS version 6.1 or later, LNAV remains as the active lateral mode during a go-around. For aircraft equipped with earlier versions of the FMS software, the lateral mode changes to roll during a go-around. When conducting SBAS operations, there are a few important things to remember. LP minimums on RNAV approaches stands for localizer performance without vertical guidance. Currently, operators of Honeywell platforms are not authorized to perform approaches to LP minimums. Pilots must be familiar with the fail-down capabilities of their SBAS system. An amber LPV enunciator is displayed on the PFD up to 30 nautical miles from the landing threshold when conditions exist that would prohibit descending to LPV minimums. If an amber LPV enunciator is displayed, the flight crew may have the ability to continue the approach to LNAV only or LNAV VNAV minimums. Refer to AC 90-107 or AMC 20-28 and company provided training material for further information on SBAS fail down procedures. Pilots must notify air traffic control of any loss of GPS or SBAS capability and state their proposed course of action. RNAV approaches with LPV minimums together with SBAS systems provide an efficient alternative to traditional ILS approaches. This video has been an overview of LPV. Please be sure to refer to AC 90-107 or AMC 20-28 and your aircraft pilot manual for more detailed information.